Hey, boys and girls, welcome back to Mario and Rabbit's Sparks of Hope. In the last episode, we began our journey towards taking on the likes of the Galactic Empress Cursum and her Rabbified followers in any way we possibly can, but due to how far her compound really is from our current planet being Beacon Beach, honestly, yeah, we're definitely going to be needing a way to warp jump using our own energy source, known as Dark Mess, and be able to purify it into a point where we can actually use it for ourselves. Which definitely sounds quite hard, but with maybe enough determination and willpower for our group of misfits and heroes, we shall definitely, hopefully, find a way. You honestly never know, because let's be honest here. With the Rabbids and the Mario gang, let's be honest here, anything should probably be possible, let's be honest there. But... In the last episode, we did make our way into the Sunrise Temple, as well as, you know, messed around with some of the side quests around Beacon Beach in general. And honestly, I think it's about time we start following our little, little spark of a Luma friend over here and see what's really going on in here. Well, but that did not look good, and our poor little spark friend kind of uh, gotten, eat by, gotten eaten by those uh, dark mist tentacles there. Although that's not the dark mist tentacles that we were primarily focusing on, but it looks like a couple are down here as well. Huh. Hmm, hurry, we've got to go after that spark of light. Yeah, we definitely do, but uh, how do we exactly deal with stuff like that? Hmm, indeed, without the spark... We will not be able to enter the lighthouse. Yeah, true, Genie. Also, I did not expect you to follow us out here, honestly, Genie. I thought you were kind of stuck to the uh, our little washing machine <laughs> transportation. But apparently she's not fully, you know, connected to that. That's interesting. Hmm, Genie, th that is far from the only reason we should save that poor creature. Um, obviously, defeating the Dark Best Tentacle will also provide us with one of the two purified dark mess energy crystals we need. Oh yeah, we do apparently need we need two of those, so that's actually perfect. Um, however, this creature's higher density of dark mess energy, as compared to the puddles, means our enemies will be more formidable. Okay, so yeah, that's definitely meaning that uh, when we go inside their special dimension, or curses dimension, we're definitely going to be dealing with a lot more dangerous enemies. Okay, well, good to know. Just in case you never honestly know. Hmm, that's why what I get for buying you off an off-the-shelf AI empathy module to save time. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And honestly, making an AI is definitely not the easiest thing, so probably not the best thing for you to do there, Beepo, to be completely fair. But we definitely do need it to be able to transfer, uh, transport ourselves around. But here we go. Good old temple rescue. So let's see what we're getting ourselves into this time. Because let's be honest here. With the fact that um, we're dealing with more dangerous things. Also, obviously it's going to be a lot more dangerous than a side quest mission. Let's be honest here. It looks like we're only dealing with a reach area though. Only thing is, is it looks like we're definitely going to need to jump off of each other to get to where we need to go. It looks like it's going to tell us about super effects now. Can be applied to potentially anyone, generating unique behaviors here, the burn super effect. So it stayed the same where they run around after they get burned, which is interesting. Sets its target alight. Super effects are used against enemies if you take care to avoid their resistances and exploit their weaknesses. For example, the scooper is weak against a burn. Equip one of your heroes with the Pyro Star, and might you might be able to then be able to wait. What? 
might then be a good strategical move. I don't know why I said that completely wrong. Always remember to use t the tactic cam by pressing the L button down to check enemies' weaknesses and resistances. But yeah, the scoper-based enemy, we learned about their weaknesses before. And it looks like this is their official, like, start- well, technically, the last level was technically their first official start one, but this is where I think they're going to be really dangerous. Because, let's be honest here, this is definitely not a map that we can take full advantage of them. But let's see here. I'm definitely going to say we'll definitely be going with Ra Rabbit Peach and Peach today. Just because I feel like we're going to definitely need... Oh wait, there's a scoper on this side too. But um, I feel like we're going to need Rabbit Peach at least for the start. Just so we have at least a healer. Because I don't know how much healing we're really going to be getting from Peach. Because the thing is, is Peach isn't really a healer anymore. And also, I feel like we're supposed to have three allies. But the thing is, is for some reason the first world seems to not give us that for some reason. I'm not really sure why. And also, let's press this down, just in case. Because I feel like, yep, we definitely need to open that up. <laughs> but it looks like we need to press down those green buttons to make it so we can go further. And I have double dash on, on Peach now, so we can definitely take full advantage of dashing into both of these enemies here. And hopefully, be able to use this to a great effect. Because the thing is, is, ra is regular Peach has a shotgun. So, we definitely want to make sure we use that as much as possible. And apparently, it's also good against partial cover as well. So, we definitely want to be able to use that to our advantage. Only thing is, is who do we want to go for in this particular instance? Because we can go for probably this one, actually. Maybe. I guess we'll find out here. Let's see here. How much damage do we do to you normally? Because I want to make sure we get rid of you. Well, we have a 40% chance of critting. So it's very possible we do get you. But we could also do something like this and turbocharge both Peach and Rabid Peach. And hopefully do enough damage to hopefully get rid of both of you easily. But I think what we should do first is get probably Rabid Peach behind cover for a second before we do this. Because you never honestly know what will end up happening to uh, poor... Well, actually... We have a good chance to get 175 damage right here, actually. You know what? We'll try it. So, Boombrella. We haven't used this yet, so might as well read through it. 143 damage, 275 damage, 228 damage if we crit, which is only a 5%. But creates a widespread of heavy damage the further the target, the less damage it does, ignores partial cover. Okay. Well, didn't knock him out, which was kind of what I was hoping it would do, but, eh, unfortunate. <laughs> Unfortunate indeed. Might have to definitely get rid of you then. I was kind of hoping that would. We could have used the rabid Luma on Peach to be... Con actually, wait, no, I didn't actually throw it on. Oops. <laughs> I was going to throw Pyro Star onto Rabbit Peach, but I guess I forgot to do that. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. But it doesn't really affect us too much, to be honest. Wow. I swear, they get crits a lot more than they're supposed to, because I think they're only like 20% crits for them, and for some reason they're hitting crits like crazy, and then I don't know why. Does it say for them? Yeah, it's 20%. I swear I get like hit. I got hit three times in a row in the last episode by them with crits for some reason, but I don't think that's supposed to be possible for them. But I definitely say we can definitely maybe go for a double- yep, we can go for a double dash. So let's definitely go for that. Um, other than that, I'm wondering if Peach can maybe- I'm not 100% on it. But actually, wait a minute. We might be able to use her full movement here to help us out. Let's get Rabbit Peach kind of behind there-ish. And then- well, I want you to stay in place, Peach, if you can. But there we go. I'm gonna see if we can maybe press this button. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna wait over here, actually. I feel safer over here. Just because, um, I forgot about the scopers over there for a second. Which could definitely not be a good thing. Um, hmm. We have an option of maybe getting rid of you, which you're further away. Which may actually be better. You know what? Well, let's go for it. Let's see if the triple troll actually gets them. Ooh, we got two crits out of that with that 40%. <laughs> nice. Um, other than that, uh, I'm wondering... If we can maybe go something like this. I'm just curious how much damage we would do. 
we have a good chance of getting that knockout on him. But it's really up to whatever the game wants to give me there, to be completely fair. But I could definitely try it, but we need to have um, somebody within decent range to be able to be able to team jump. Which is definitely going to be where things are definitely kind of up to what we want to try and do. We do have the power block in here, actually. You know what? We're going to use this instead. Let's see here. I might be able to... Yep, I can get rid of him. But I actually want to get rid of you, honestly. So not bad. But how do we get both of those buttons, though? Because we got to find a way to get one of them back. Unless maybe the green button will open a pathway back. Which, if it does, that's good for us. But who honestly knows if it's going to... I think maybe going from behind here might be a better way of... Actually, I'm not sure, actually, to be honest. We'll try it. Let's see what the Boombrella really does on... It doesn't do much to cover whatsoever, it looks like. Well, at least we tried. Okay, so let's see. The Stooges don't seem too dangerous, though. But the Scopers definitely aren't going to be too friendly, though, from what we can see. I'm going to say probably team jumping with Peach here might be a good idea. And then we'll drop, try and drop like that-ish. Because if we can use this green button to our advantage, I'm going to hope we can. We might be able to get behind cover as long as we're like that, thankfully. <laughs> they could have been much worse, let's be honest there. They could have been really, really bad. But thankfully it wasn't too bad. Um, Other than that, what happens if we deal with the green side on that side? Do we really need to do so? I'm not really sure. But what we can do, per, per se, is maybe drop a little bit closer, like so, and maybe start dealing with some of these enemies over here, while regular Peach deals with the one behind us. Never know. Could work. And then because this guy's behind partial cover, we can get the, the crits off of him. So we'll definitely try, which we didn't, but it, it was definitely worth a shot. Um, other than that, I wish we had Hero Sight on Peach, but she doesn't have it anymore. Because she had it in the original, but now she doesn't have it, which is kind of unfortunate. But I might be able to maybe give... Yep, I can. Okay, so let's see here. Team Barrier. Creates a barrier that protects allies within range against all damage or super effects. Grants two charges. Okay, so yeah, definitely give up a shield then. Because right now we're kind of in a weird spot where we can definitely get attacked here. If we're not careful. And what we'll do is probably start trying to break that cover. Yep, there we go. Now he only has 50% cover in that spot. And I think that's his best cover that he could possibly get from that range. So, definitely better from that angle for sure. Ooh. Oh, we got hit by one of those, but it completely blocked it. <laughs> Good thing we did that, though. Because that'll definitely come in handy for sure. That team barrier definitely looks pretty good. Because blocking one whole, dam or one whole hit is definitely not bad. So... Definitely good. I like it. Um, other than that, I do say definitely dash into you. Can I dash into you twice? Oh, we can. Ooh, okay, yeah, do that. <laughs> Drop his HP a little bit, because then we can start dealing with them soon. Okay, right now I'm not really liking their their cover spots. They don't have hero sites or villain sites active, so we can easily start doing some damage. Only thing is, is how do we want to do it and how do we get them? Definitely see a triple troll for this guy, though. So let's definitely go for that while we're here. <laughs> Get rid of one of the scopers. That guy's definitely gonna hit me, though. Is he? Oh, actually, maybe not. No, it's a, it's in a weird spot. He might be able to, but it really depends if um, if he were to go around the cover, or that partial cover over there. Which, I'm honestly not sure. Because right here, it looks like if he were to maybe go around it a little bit with his gun, he might be able to shoot me. But I'm not really sure there, to be completely fair. And then, oh, we can actually check out these buttons. Well, it just says explanation mark. It doesn't say anything else. <laughs> okay, other than that, um, there's no way of hitting that guy. But maybe if I go from here, we can maybe get rid of him. Yep, we can. Good. That's what I want. I want to make sure he's not following anymore, to be completely fair. And then, we do have an action point left. We can res unreset our cooldowns, or we can go for a heal, but I really don't think we'll need that. Because we do have the heal ability with Rabid Peach, to be completely fair. So we'll end our turn, 
And let's see. Yeah, he's not gonna be able to- Oh no, he can hit me from there. Really? Huh. That didn't look like that could hit me, but apparently he can. Weird. Okay then. <laughs> I really thought he wouldn't be able to hit me from there. But apparently, nope, that's still an area. But we do need to get over there, though, soon. So I think the best thing to do here... We can press the button. Let's see what the button does first. Okay, it looks like it just opens us another path. But I feel like maybe doing a team jump here might actually make it... So we can actually make it over there. Could be wrong, but I guess we'll find out. Let's see. <laughs> it's worth a shot. We do have a decent timer on this, and does give us a decent range. Although I bounced out of ground. I thought I was over that. Hmm. Okay, well that's unfortunate. <laughs> I really thought I was over on the other side though, to be completely fair. But uh, we're not in range of a area to go to yet. Which is not exactly what we wanted. But we can still work with us. Okay, we have those stooges behind us, so we're probably going to need to heal. But we might be able to go for a turbo charge here first before we do anything, because increasing our damage on those guys in the back might be a good idea. And then other than that, rabbit, our regular Peach can maybe do something here. I'm going to see what we can do, though, because it might determine based on how we do this move with Pe Rabbit Peach here, to be completely honest. And I think getting rid of one of these guys is probably our, probably our best action, to be completely fair. <laughs> But it's worth a shot. There we go. Triple crit on you. Not bad. Um, other than that, I'm going to probably go for reset cooldown, to be completely fair, and see if we can maybe, just maybe, well, can't get into range for you, but maybe if we put ourselves, like, kind of here-ish, it'll maybe force the Stooges to maybe deal with us instead. And if it does, that's good, because then we can work around that. Because the thing is, is I'm more worried about the Stooges behind us than I am at the current moment for Peach normally. Okay, we're gonna get hit a lot though. Not what I wanted to do. I definitely thought this turn was gonna go much different, but that water puddle was actually a lot larger than I thought it was when it came to our actual jump range. But I think what we can do to kind of counteract all that is Actually, maybe our regular mushroom might be. Yeah, regular mushroom's just better. So, I think we'll do a double mushroom on both of them. Just to kind of get everybody nice and healed. <laughs> but yeah, that definitely was not exactly what I thought it would do, to be completely fair. So, noted on when it comes to team jumping, it does not go as far as I actually thought it did. Because I really did think it went a little bit farther, to be completely fair. And it ended up not working in the way that I thought it did. But I think as long as we move like here-ish, yeah, Peach can easily get to the reach area.
Okay, defeat the giant wild claw. And it looks like we might have ourselves a new ally. Being this ominous stranger, obviously, but... Cool, though. Definitely will take it. Because uh, having three allies would definitely come in handy. Because, uh, well, that's what I'm used to when it comes to Kingdom Battle and DK's Adventure for the DLC for Kingdom Battle. So it would be nice to have three allies and no longer, you know, be kind of limited. Because being able to have three characters would be nice. But let's see what Beepo's got to say. Hmm, assuming we can trust the Albany Stranger, having three heroes cooperating on the battlefield will give us a huge advantage. Yeah, true. Thing is, is what are we working with? And also, can we see their name? Yes, we can. Okay, so their name is Edge. And they're obviously a rabid. Although, I'm not really sure who they're connected with, though. Just because I'm so used to, well, every character in Rabbid we've ever had. Rabbid Peach, Rabbid Luigi, Rabbid Mario, and Rabbid Yoshi. And obviously, Rabbid Cranky. Actually, Cranky, yeah, we didn't have Crankies for regular Cranky. So I guess that's fair, but they, we also had Rabbid Kong, which was obviously Donkey Kong. But he was not on our team, obviously, but still. But interesting, though. But what kind of spark are they running with? Exosphere. Level 2, Fortify. Okay, 13 meters, 1 turn, and 4 turns. Okay. Allowing within um, allies within range take negative 35% damage, including damage from super effects for 1 turn. Increases all moveability damage by 20%. Okay, sounds pretty good. Definitely sounds, you know, usable, for sure. Um, other than that, should we really go with Peach here? And Rabbit Peach if we're dealing with a boss? Probably not. I feel like we probably want somebody that can probably do a little bit more to bosses when it comes to, like, damage and stuff like that. So, honestly, it really kind of depends on who we should use. Could use Luigi. That could probably come in handy. You know what? We're going to try Luigi because... It looks like we can get pretty far away from enemies on this map, so it may actually be better for us to do Luigi here than regular Peach. And we'll maybe figure it out along with them um, just in general. I think we can, I guess, just get right into the battle. But first things first is actually checking what this guy does. So what is Wild Claw and what does it do? Giant Wild Claw viciously goes after its nearest challenger to unleash area attacks that inflict massive amounts of damage. Oh, yeah, that's a massive amount of damage. 390 damage plus a chance to crit for 507. Okay, so he's a smasher then, it looks like. Or maybe not, but I guess we'll find out. That inflicts a massive amount of damage. If attacked, it will charge at its attacker in rage, so like a smasher, during which it will launch an extra attack. Okay. So, if we hit him, we need to be careful. Although it doesn't look like... How far can he run? Doesn't look like we could see. Actually. Huh. I wish they would let you know their movement. Because that would definitely be good to know. Oh, what? No, you can. Okay, there we go. It's just that they have them in se separate things. Oh, it has an ability. Hot Pursuit. If attacked, moves towards the offender. If they're within range, performs an extra attack on them. Okay, so that's just what it told us. But it seems like they're pretty slow. So I should definitely mark him, so we can see him at all times, I feel like. Because being able to know where he can move, which it looks like that doesn't stay, it would be good to know for sure what he can do. And then let's see what Edge can do. Flying Blade. When thrown at an enemy, ignores partial cover while hitting multiple targets along the way before coming back. Okay, sounds pretty cool. So like the banana rank, but it looks like based on what it's kind of implying based on that yellow ring it looks like it bounces back huh okay then interesting definitely interesting um but i do think we could maybe turbocharge um edge here i think because it might help her here i think based on the fact that that does extra damage and if we can get rid of these uh rabbits here that might be a good thing for us so hopefully this does a lot of damage and we got a crit there, so one of them's definitely down. Okay, not bad. I'll take that for sure. Um, Luigi, on the other hand, might be able to make sure that one goes down. And then I think we'll try and stay away from the boss for a second. Just so we can kind of get an idea of what kind of movements he might want to do before just going crazy and attacking him. Because you never honestly know. 
when it comes to enemies sometimes. But I do think what we could do here... Well, I can't really do it from that range, so I guess we'll move like here-ish. And then we'll make sure that you're out of here. Because Sharpshooter is definitely going to do more than the amount of HP you had left. So, let's be honest there. That should be pretty good. Um, I guess we'll end turn and see what happens. And then we'll check out Edge's ability, I think, next turn. So I'm not really sure if I really wanted to go any further there. But let's see here. Ooh, look, those appear to be darkness portals. Destroy them quickly. More enemies are bound to pop out soon. Okay. You say more enemies, to say. Can we see what kind of enemies spawn from these? Does not look like it. Okay. Well, good to know. <laughs> At least we checked, right? I'm curious to see if we can maybe attack here. We can attack, but we can also... Oh, wait, but we can't move after attacking. So let's see here. Stormblade. Um, all targets within range are dealt 140% damage, plus any super effects if any one of them move within line of sight has one charge. Okay. Well, definitely noted. It can probably come into a handy effect at least. But I'm thinking maybe if we move like behind here, we might be able to maybe like push it forward a little bit. Let's see, let's see how far we can attack from. Looks like this is like our max range at the current moment. So let's see if we can maybe get a crit here. If we can, that might be good. And then we'll set up the Ouija to maybe hero sight as well. Okay, well he's starting to move. I'm gonna say we probably hero sight with a bunch of people actually right now. So let's set up Steely Stare for Luigi. And then we'll also start up that Stormblade for our other ally as well, Edge. But let's also make sure our furthest range with that as well, because I feel like with Luigi, he might actually do even more damage with his uh, hero sight as well from long range as well, because that's how his base weapon is. So let's see if we can maybe take advantage of that. Let's see here. I'm trying to make sure about our range for our steely sight, because I want to make sure about that. Okay, he is in range of it. Okay, good. So, we just get behind cover here. And then I guess we figure it out from there, honestly. <laughs> and also, we might be able to set up a burn attack on that as well. Which might actually be coming uh, quite handy, too. And let's see here. Oh, but we can't attack this turn. That's one problem with the action points I could already see. Uh-oh. Well, I was wanting to attack with Luigi... Huh. Okay, then. Because I was going to push them away from Rabid Peach here, if we could. Hmm. Well, let's make sure we're in the furthest range we possibly can be from this guy, because I feel like being as far as possible may be in our best efforts. You never know. <laughs> you never know, indeed. Well, let's see here. Okay, so it does activate the Steely Stairs, which is good. Oh, but it looks like he runs toward- okay, maybe that actually worked then. Huh. Also, it didn't activate the- hmm. Maybe it'll wait till this guy attacks. Maybe. But interesting, though. Okay, then. Very interesting. I was not expecting it to work like that, but for some reason we didn't do two uh, hero sites there for some reason, which is odd. But it looks like uh, we got our stooge on the map. Which really couldn't deal with before, to be completely honest. We're nowhere near it. But it looks like you can't dash into these, though, based on that being the case of the circle around them. Well, let's see here. Wild Claw. Looks like we probably need to kind of make, like, a decent effort to kind of stay out of range of them as much as we possibly can. Also, that has 190... Oh, no, that's... Well, it's more than 190 HP. Huh. Oh. Okay. Not really sure how I feel about that. But we can do a decent amount of damage to you. It looks like we want to bounce them around as much as possible. It looks like... I think we can leave the portals alone for the time being. As long as we kind of stay away from this enemy as much as possible. Because he'll move. And then he doesn't have much motion already. So we can kind of take advantage of that. 
as long as we do this the right way. So it looks like maybe if we triple troll you, that could come in handy here. Although, is that how we want to do this? Really? Um, honestly, up to however it works. But it looks like maybe pulling you closer this way while doing a little bit of flying blade damage. Which definitely does not look bad. I like the damage we do with that. Okay, he's coming a lot closer, though. And I think he might be in motion of actually running into us now. Let's see. Nope, he's still out of range. Good. Okay. So we're still good. Only thing is, is those enemies coming in, I'm not really sure about if we should leave them how they are or not. <laughs> but it does look like we can go for another triple troll here, so let's definitely go for that. And we got two crits in. Okay, not bad. Are you in range of Rabbit Peach now, though? That's... I want to make sure, like, we're staying just out of range of this guy. Okay, so he has a very, very low movement. Okay, so it, we're good against him. As long as we're doing what we're doing. It's a good thing we have Luigi here, because we could pull him pretty far from, like... Well, from pretty far away, is what I should be saying. Well, staying away from him. But it doesn't look like hero sights on him are a good idea at any chance. Just because of the fact that, uh... Yeah, let's be honest here. I think if we hit him, they might move like the enemies that we do not want to be dealing with, which, is, which are the Smashers, because the Smashers like doing that kind of stuff. But now we have a lot of enemies now. But the thing is, is I feel like we can might maybe, just maybe... Ooh, wow. Okay. Oh, we can actually see the max uh, distance of the extra damage, actually. Interesting. So normal damage is the middle ring, while the most damage we can get is that far ring. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Well, it's definitely... Ooh, 390 crit. <laughs> yep, this is over. This is over. He's got no chance. I think this is where we get him. As long as we do this right. But the thing is, is let's see. We do 30, 330 here. I think we just focus the Wild Claw here. I think the portal behind us isn't what we want to be dealing with. But he only has 2 HP left. So as long as Rabbit Peach gets a nice little hit into him, I think we got him. And it says just to defeat him, so I think that's our only current idea of doing. So down goes the Wild Claw, and down goes that battle as well. Not bad, I liked Edge. Huh, welcome to the team if you do join us. Because that definitely was quite an interesting fight there, but we also got ourselves some Dark Mess Energy purified. Which means we only need one more, being that one on top of the Lighthouse. But we still don't know how to deal with that though. If we get the Spark then we could definitely do so, but who even knows if he's going to follow us yet. But level 5 for everybody, we'll definitely take that. 85 coins, 50 star bits, as well as giant enemies lore. Okay, cool. Thanks. We have some more genie lore, which we'll definitely use. <laughs> I don't mind reading out those. But it looks like, yep, there goes our little dark mess tentacle. So our first one's down for this, for this map specifically, for Beacon Beach. Because there's apparently one on the lighthouse and apparently one in the shrine, which we didn't really know about before. So good thing there was one down here, because apparently we needed two in order to jump. But, let's see what's going on with Edge here, maybe. Mm, excuse me, intimidating stranger. It's vitally important that the spark come with us to the lighthouse. Until we destroy the lighthouse tentacle, we can't create warp tunnels to the other planets and eventually... To Cursa. And I'm gonna do a normal voice for this guy. I can unlock the lighthouse. Watch. I'll meet you there. Huh. Well, Edge didn't talk to us, but at least uh, the spark's gonna help us out. Bingo, bango, bongo, baby. You got the spark. Let's get into the lighthouse and. And. You okay there, Augie? <laughs> Gah, you again! The Spark Hunter! Spark Hunter? And apparently, Edge is actually gonna talk. Okay, cool. Oh, nice, Spark Hunter. Meet Edge. Oh, nice to meet you, Edge. Great. Rabid Edge, welcome to. Wouldn't it just be Edge? Because, um, uh, they actually don't know who they're connected to, so just calling them Edge would probably be best here. Because. Honestly, who even knows if they even have a connection, honestly, because Rabid Cranky 
well, let's be honest here, we never met Cranky in Donkey Kong's adventure, so it's kind of weird to just call her, call them Edge, just to be honest. Just Edge. You got a spaceship, huh? Guess you can ride space car with me for a time. It's not like you can't use the help anyways. Eh, fair. And we'll definitely could use some extra help, and that flying blade definitely looks like it's going to be fun to use. So, let's be honest here, definitely having Edge around would actually make our our time a little bit easier, I think. Hmm, speaking of him, I believe it's time we stopped keeping three heroes on our front line who take the first shift. Honestly, I think we're throwing Edge already on the front line, I think, just because of the fact that it's a completely new character that wasn't in Kingdom Battle, so... And I did say at the end of Donkey Kong's Adventure, if there is any new characters, and honestly, we'll use them. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely take a priority on Edge. Unless there's other new characters, which I don't know about, but I'll definitely take it. But third uh, team slot unlocked. Don't know if we're going to get to four, because the thing is, is we could get four, but I'm honestly not sure if it will unlock to four, just because of Kingdom Battle... You know, the maximum was three. But I'll definitely take a whole new ally, though. So let's see here. So Blade Master, Edge of Speed, and Skill allow her to target the multiple enemies and damage each with a single attack. Okay, sounds pretty good. Um, we can look at more info here. But I think that's pretty much all we're really going to get. Just because, you know, it's already what we already understand. But when it says hero info, oh, we can actually look straight into, like, everything they can do. Interesting. Okay, I like that. I definitely like that. We do have five skill points, so we should, be, we should definitely look into Edge here real quick before we go any further. So, critical dash. Interesting. Starting from the first dash, each following one does 20% more damage. Okay, sounds pretty good. Uh, dash increm- Oh, increases movement by dashing. Okay, dashing an opponent increases the area of movement by three meters. That could be pretty good. And it looks like, oh, Edge has multi multiple dashes. So, in essence, this could be really good. That could be really, really, really good. We can increase our crit chance, and with the fact that it hits multiple times with that Storm Blade, that sounds like a lot of damage. Um, weapon range. Blade Halo increase. Ooh. That looks pretty cool on that bottom right there. I like that. Uh, chain boost, 5% damage per hit. That also sounds good. Um, Mountain Stance. When Stormblade is active, Edge receives 50% less damage from any source. That sounds... huh. There's definitely a lot of choices here. And we also have the ability to increase the Stormblade's damage. Huh. Well, I definitely say Extra Dash is our first option. Because maybe getting this might be good. Wait a minute, why can't I not get it? Acquire with three. Well, I... Do have oh no I don't have three that costs two okay well we can't get that right away but I do like the idea of getting extra damage as well as a critical hit chance for right now and then when we do get another level we'll put that into getting the extra movement because I feel like having extra movement might end up actually coming in handy and having the ability to dash as much as possible may actually be really good you never honestly know um other than that. My honest uh, uh, idea was I, I was actually saving up for this life trade ability. So I feel like that's probably what I want to grab here. So let's refund both of those, and I should be able to get this now with Rabid Peach here. Because the reason is, it's because this is why. Life trade. Weapon defeat will heal Rabid Peach by 20%. Rabid Peach recovers 20% of her HP if the target of her patrol attack is defeated. Which sounds pretty good. And I definitely don't like the, like, I don't, or what, don't, I, why to say don't like, I do like the idea of being able to heal myself as, like, much as possible. And Rabbit Peach being able to kind of lifesteal actually sounds pretty nice as well. And that's something I like in video games is being able to lifesteal enemies. So I feel like that could come in handy. And then I think we'll probably stay with Luigi for right now, just because I'm a little bit more used to him at the current moment. And I think what I wanted for Luigi was this high ground bonus. But the thing is, is it requires four, and we don't really have a way of, you know, pulling enough points off where I feel like it would be good to do so yet. So I feel like probably just increasing his damage for now. 
and maybe his movement range would- actually, wait, no. Oh, I thought we had more. Okay, well, increasing his damage and having full crit at the current moment would probably be better for us, I think. You never know, but eh, it's honestly what I can definitely say. It might come in handy. But in the deep water, one and a half purified dark mass energy crystals has now been collected. <laughs> but there we go. Good. We'll definitely take whatever we can get there. And also, Augie's down here now, so we can talk to him too. Let's see what's going on with you. Hmm, to the lighthouse. Nice weather we're not having. Hmm? <laughs> ha um, About that dark mist tentacle at the lighthouse. There's a shortcut that way, in case you hate walking as much as I do. <laughs> okay, well, we'll definitely make our way over there. I see a green little thing, thing for coins, but the thing is, is... How do we get up there, actually? Hmm. Well, interesting. Well, there is definitely multiple weapon skins obtained. We got multiple weapon skins? No, we didn't. What are you talking about? <laughs> Maybe for Edge? Yeah, for Edge we did. Oh, we got- actually, there's another one for Lore. Carry- car Galactic Blade. Carry this Galactic Storm Blade with confidence, Edge, and trust that your friends will see you- see you for who you truly are. So just like Mario and Rabbit Peach, there's a special dialogue on that special weapon that's only for Edge here. Huh. Interesting. We'll throw it on, honestly. Looks pretty cool. I'll definitely say that. <laughs> but interesting, though. Giant enemies as well. I forgot we got that for Genie, so we'll read that real quick, too. Curse's power is truly incredible, as evidenced during this attack by an enemy that had been enlarged to gigantic proportions. And not just due to their tremendous size, a battle analysis reveals that they are immune to all super effects as well. The amount of energy involved, along with the delicate nature of such amplification, would suggest that these oversized enemies are quite rare. That would make sense. Huh. Interesting, though. Anything else uh, open up now that we beat that? Yep, a couple things actually did. Green Coin Challenge. The Riddle of the Sunrise Temple. Ceramic Panic. As well as uh, this thing over here. As well as one over by the star as well. A truly ginormous, ginormous Goomba. Huh. That sounds interesting. As well as from bad to worse. Which it appears to be one of those missions. Like the one that's hiding behind this key over here. So, interesting. Okay. Well, we can definitely take a look. But we do need to make our way over here. Also, is this a rabid uh, dialogue? I'm curious. Yep, it is. Because <laughs> it's harder to find them in this game. Well, let's see here. Hmm, I can't imagine what could you call Augie of all people to abandon a delicious cheesecake. We'd best keep on our toes. <laughs> I guess so. And also we got another mural about Augie and uh, Perfectious, it looks like. Hmm, in wartime, Augie was left behind to watch the livestock. It's uh, how a flock of chickens came to briefly rule this city. Huh. So that's why we saw chickens in the uh, Beacon Beach earlier. Well, they're hiding up on top of a, like, well, technically they're hiding on top of a tree, but still, though. And also, who are you? Mm, if only I could sell it. That would show them. Oh, hello there, Professor Backpack. Huh, interesting name. Hmm, so are you okay? Do you need us to call someone? Probably. Um, Beepo, this is Professor Backpack. The most celebrated archaeologist of our time. Once we celebrated history, ruins were uncovered, treasures hunted, discoveries made in the past, not just the future. These days, if something wasn't digitized, it is, um, it's as if it never happened anyways. Well, fair, but, uh, not really true, though. But kind of true, I guess, at the same time. I am here to solve an ancient riddle, the answer to which has eluded explorers for centuries, but I can't solve it alone. The past is what ties us together. Will you help me revive it, before it is forgotten completely? Yeah, we can try. I am convinced that somewhere in this room is the answer to the riddle of the temple of Beacon Beach. Well, maybe. It looks like... Whatever's going on over there definitely seemed interesting. I saw it for, like, half a second. But, uh, okay then. Looks like it's something to be... When it comes to the murals, maybe. Because it looks like we have Perfectious in the left. 
Not really sure who's on top right, but Augie's in the left for bottom. And then something to do with the sun. Okay. Hmm, a manuscript I translated called it the Chamber of Two Sons. You'll understand when you hear the riddle. The king pins a star on his favorite son. The outcast runs away towards a new dawn. The painting in the temple are paintings in the temple are hauntingly beautiful. I also suspect they are connected to the riddle somehow. Okay. So we already understand that Perfectius is the favored son. So based on that, it sounds like we definitely want Augie to be facing the sun while Perfectius is facing his dad, I think. That's kind of how I get it, but I guess we'll find out. If this tragic story is mean to mean anything, if people are to learn from it, it must be solved. I guess so. Okay. Well, let's look at the mural over here, because he pointed us to another one. My whole life, Augie has was eclipsed by his older brother, which, if were to be honest, couldn't have been at all that difficult. Fair. Definitely fair. <laughs> okay, so... It looks like the left arm is shunning the sun, so obviously that one. Then it looks like, obviously, we probably want to make Perfectius look towards his dad like that. And obviously, he's going to be running towards the sun. And then the sun should probably be facing Augie, I would think. Yep, there we go. Thought so. That sound about right, just because based on what that riddle was kind of saying. But easy. There we go. The riddle of the Sunrise Temple, as well as some kind of rabid box. Ooh, we got ourselves a star potion. So these are able to be used instead of the star bits from what we heard before. So cool, we'll take one of those. We can't really use it yet because all of our current uh, little buddies can't really use it at the current moment when it comes to our sparks. But we'll definitely take it for later. Let's see what's going on with the backpack real quick. What? You solved the riddle of the temple. Tell me everything. I want to spread the news so history can come alive again. It was most about, uh, wrote mostly about rotating the statues. The outcast most appro appropriately was Augie. Mm, poor Augie. The past does not shout at us from a distant, but it whispers in our ears. Mm, um, yes, uh, well, good luck with everything in the future. Or shall I say, the past. <laughs> okay, we'll see you later, buddy. We'll also grab our teleport as well. Wasn't there, um... One of those lore bugs around here, because I could have sworn it was in a weird spot, like, above us a little bit, and I think this might actually lead to it. Oh, hey, there's a toad here. What's a toad doing in this area? Huh, you're a long way from home, buddy, but ceramic panic. Well, we'll help him out, just because uh, seeing a toad here is kind of interesting, and I kind of want to figure out what's going on with him, just because uh, he doesn't seem, uh, you know, he seems a long way from home, that's for sure. <laughs> Unless he hitched a ride on our, you know, our little ship there, but I don't think he did. Huh. But he's definitely hiding on that little area over there. Or reach area. Okay. Well, seems easy enough. We'll skip through the rest of that, but it looks like we got normal Wild Claws now. So, the Wild Claw boss was a boss, but the Wild Claw enemy specifically, obviously, are going to be normal. So these guys are normally weak to splash, but resistant to burn. Okay. Interesting. So they are... Those are our new smashers, though, for sure. So it looks like we just have to make our way back there, based on that. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Seems pretty easy, though. We'll, we'll start it in. See what we can do. Also, I just noticed Edge is a lot taller than the rabbits normally are. <laughs> Jeez. Actually, Edge is kind of taller than Luigi, but mostly because of the hair, though. But still, though, that's kind of interesting, though. We do have Double Dash for Rabid, Edge, or Edge in general. So we should probably take a, take use of that. Um, for Luigi, though. I'm not really seeing an option where shooting at the bomb bomb would be our best option. But maybe, just maybe, shooting at the Wild Claws may be an option. Only thing is, is I don't think we can get up there. 
for damage at the current moment. But I want to kind of figure out our current um, ideas of movement, though. I'm going to say what we could do, per se, is maybe have Edge go forward a little bit and see what we could do from there. Because it doesn't look like we have many other types of any uh, enemies other than the obvious uh, obvious bomb bombs. Also, wait a minute. Before we do, what kind of movement does normal wild claws have? That's what we should figure out. They have a little bit more than the giant guy. Okay, good to know. Because the thing is, is being able to know that would definitely help us, for sure. But I'm, I'm going to say let's definitely get rid of the bomb bomb. I think. Just because he's a little too close for comfort. Um, for Luigi, maybe what we can do here... Because I feel like Luigi might be able to kind of help out here for Rabbit Peach, I think. Because Luigi wants to be in the back anyways, so getting rid of that bomb on with Luigi is probably smarter. Then we can make our way a little bit closer. Let's see if we can maybe start... We could do a little bit of damage, but I'm not sure if I want to, to be completely honest. I'm going to say we'll leave on damage for a second and just see what the enemy wants to do first. So we'll get an idea. Because the bomb bombs um, might be able to help us with dealing extra damage to the wild claws, while also staying away from them at the same time. So let's see here. We'll grab this, and we'll definitely take it with us. And we'll pull it back just far enough to be able to yep, do a little bit of damage, which is exactly what I wanted. And then for normal HP, 650-ish. Okay. So we need to be careful on these enemies for sure. For the most part. And it looks like we need to be in, like, direct line of sight to be able to do that big hit there. Okay. Well, good to know. Well, Luigi... Yeah, can't see the enemies yet. But the thing is, is these enemies chase down whoever shot them. So as long as we take advantage of that, we could do quite good here. Okay, so we'll start pulling this guy closer then. And then we'll start slowly whittling down the Wild Claws, because he'll come closer... And then we'll get be able to do a decent amount of damage to them. And we can also do our double dash too, since we have the option to. So let's definitely take advantage of it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then I think we can easily get rid of you. Uh, why does it have that on there? Okay, wait a minute. What does that mean? Because uh, that doesn't seem like a good thing. Hot Pursuit. Well, he's going to go down if we hit him. So... Okay, then. Well, he shouldn't even be able to hit me, so I don't know why it's telling me that, but let's just hit you anyways. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not going to hot pursuit me, buddy. It, it made it look like it was going to, though, to be completely fair, but um, yeah, that was a little weird. Let's set up Steely Stare, though. I feel like now we can maybe take advantage of what we want to now, and then Storm Blade as well, maybe. So hopefully we can take full advantage of this. Because I feel like now that we have this enemy in a way that isn't like the boss, I feel like we can just shoot this guy a little bit and maybe take advantage of it. And then I might actually turbo charge here, just in case, to make sure we can get rid of the Wild Claw here. Because I feel like as long as we do like a lot of damage right away, he won't be able to fully take advantage of running at us and being able to do what he wants to do. Okay, well, he's right on top of me. So hopefully... Yep, here we go, Stormblade. Oh! Okay, well, that's apparently how that works. So it's a me Okay, so... Oh, that's melee. I didn't realize that. Okay. So Stormblade itself is melee. So like uh, the Finn boss in uh, Donkey Kong's Adventure, where he was uh, he had the hammer ability... Okay, interesting. Well, noted for sure on that, just because now I know that for Edge, because I wasn't too sure on that. This is starting to spawn more enemies, but we don't know what it is, so I'm not really sure what we should do there yet. Well, let's definitely start getting Edge a little bit further, I think, and so we can prepare for anything that decides to maybe make its way up here. And it looks like we can easily deal with the bomb on here, so let's just get rid of them with Edge. <laughs> No reason not to, right? And it might increase the movement here, too, that we can do. As long as we do it right. 
Let's get Rabbit Peach a nice distance up, as far as we possibly can. And then Luigi will slowly but surely be following from behind, I think. I think it's probably best if we keep Luigi back here. Because the further he is, the more damage he does. So taking full advantage of that is probably good. And it looks like these are spawning bomb bombs. Okay. A lot of them, actually. Okay, so four bomb bombs are now on field. And we can easily get rid of a bunch of them, actually, as long as we hit one of them. Actually, to be completely fair here. <laughs> yeah, that's a free knockout on all of them. Okay, Luigi, have a field day, I think. Because that's literally free. So, boom, boom, and yep. <laughs> they didn't even get a chance. Okay, then. Well, poor, uh, poor bomb bombs. They didn't get a chance whatsoever. Let's see if uh, we can maybe... Nope. She needs to be a little closer. Okay, so it looks like maybe from there-ish, I think. Yep, there we go. <laughs> and then we'll take that nice little jump. And hopefully Edge can make the rest. Nope, not not there, but just about. I think we can end turn. Well, they're about to spawn enemies, but we're perfectly fine. There we go. <laughs> nice try, though, game. Nice try, indeed. But we did get ourselves a nice little win there. Not bad. Also, we can finally figure out what's going on with this toad. Because, uh, he was not having a fun time in that dark mess puddle, that's for sure. <laughs> and we also get ourselves another coin as well. But let's see here, what's going on with you, buddy? I'm okay. This isn't the first scary situation I've run into during on our adventure. Or, into during an adventure. Eh, probably true. <laughs> let's be honest there. And it looks like our... there's something back there. Yep, it seems to be what we're looking for, actually. So let's pull this out. Pull it to the right. Let's see what's going on with this circle puzzle, too. Because obviously, this is going to go back to that thing that was next to Toad. Only thing is, is what does it do for us, is the real question. Because it seems like these always open things. Oh, just a little bit of a freebie. Okay, cool. What are you hiding, though? Let's see. Just a bunch of star bits, as well as behind the clay jars. Some more uh, planet coins, and I think we have enough for that planet uh, key now, too. So we can open up that uh, little uh, spark area soon, which will definitely come in handy, just because I'm very curious what's going on with that. But we do have another mural over here, so let's see what's going on. Okay. So it looks like the mother and the father preferred Perfectius, it looks like, and then obviously the dad cast away his Augie. Poor Augie, though. The last stroll for Augie's parents was when Augie drove the family's son chariot into the neighbor's swimming pool during Perfectress's wedding feast. Huh. That's unfortunate. But Augie was kind of tasked with doing stuff, and uh, we kind of saw that uh, he kind of uh, completely, you know, went around and not did it, but Augie... It is still kind of unfortunate for Aki as well. Oh, another one of those Goombas. We need to go down here, actually. We need to get rid of the other Goomba here, because we're supposed to get rid of three of these guys for the rab- or I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was a rabbit at the beginning, wasn't it? There was a rabbit at the beginning of the Sunrise Temple that asked us to get rid of a bunch of Goombas, if we could, to help them out. But it looks like we got a Goomba as well as what looks to be a Scoper as well. Although he's not, like, you know, hunched over like they normally are when we fight them. But this should be pretty simple. Goombas are pretty simple for us to deal with, for the most part. Only thing is, is... How do we deal with Mr. Scoper here? In the, in the quick, quickest fashion. Because I feel like if we definitely go for the burn attack here with Pyrostar, we should be able to burn him. And then from there, we could probably figure out what to do from there. But I think probably bringing Rabid Peach as close as possible to deal with the Goombas might help us out as well. Because as long as we, you know, get rid of the Goombas, I think we're good as well. For just in general, because that's a free knockout on a bunch of enemies. Then we need to bring Luigi a little closer for Edge to be able to jump, it looks like. Or actually, Luigi could do it too, but... Um, I feel like maybe giving Edge a little bit more of a, more of an edge to jump probably would be better, though, in the long run. Just because of the fact that we do have the double dash. So as long as I think we land, like, here-ish, yep, we can vault over if we need to. But I don't think we'll need to, because we can easily go like that, go like that. And then, um, 
We need to get out of range in case he does get burned here in a second. So let's kind of like uh, get ourselves into a little bit of safety if possible. And then I think we can now go for the hit now, just in case. So let's see. Yep, we did 526 damage though, and it ended up hitting Rabbit Peach. Oof. Well, unfortunate that we ended up getting hit there, but it didn't hurt us too bad, I think. <laughs> but that was a pretty simple little battle for the Goomba. We'll definitely take uh, the win there, and then we also got a POW block as well. So having that for a future fight might actually come in handy. But there we go, POW block obtained, as well as finished off that mission for Goomba Hunts, and we don't have to go all the way back to do it. Cool, Goomba Hunt now completes. And then, honestly... I kind of want to check out what's going on with the star over here, to be completely honest, from bad to worse. I think that's where we should head. And then we'll end off today's episode after maybe collecting that star, I think. Because I want to get to um, figuring out what these uh, spark missions are. Because we haven't dealt with one yet. Actually, wait a minute. It looks like we have to go down here, actually. So let's go see what's going on with that, just because I am very curious. And also, uh, it looks like there's a broken... Uh, Broken Sun down here, too. But we also got some more uh, Lorb here as well. So what's this one for? Wild Claws. Oh, okay, so specifically for the enemies. These creatures inherited feline DNA, giving them formidable predatory instincts. They rush, into, rush their attacker instantly when assaulted, a habit we can use to our advantage to lure them where we wish. These Wild Claws despise contact with water and are resistant to fire-based attacks, to my surprise. I find them both menacing and cute, a reminder that bioforms are complex, varied, and often hold contradictions. Huh. Okay, then. So it's obviously a, like a giant cat, so probably a tiger connected with a uh, with a rabid. Interesting. Okay, then. Also, it looks like... Uh, wait a minute. Huh? Oh. Okay. Interesting. I was, I was confused with the fact that there were so many coins in one spot, to be completely fair. Okay, then. So it looks like what we need to do is follow the triple coins, then, as much as we possibly can. And probably need to get, well, probably the same amount as a normal eight-coin mission. Interesting, though. Oh, no. Apparently a lot less. Oh, okay. Well, that works. <laughs> but there we go. Green coin challenge complete. Not bad. Not bad at all. We'll also open this as well for some extra coins. <laughs> Might as well do it while we're over there, right? And then, that should have been the only thing in between us and our uh, Luma, or Rabbit Luma, or Spark, whatever you want to end up calling it, but that did seem like it was the last thing in between us. And then there's also this area over here, which seems to be for a pill block. Ooh, thanks. <laughs> we'll take one of those. It looks like we got some rabbits eating some cookies down there. <laughs> Well, let's see what's going on with this, uh, oh, hello, Wild Claw. Yeah, you're not stopping me, buddy. <laughs> you're not stopping me whatsoever. So it looks like regular enemies as well as the... Well, well regular Mario enemies as well as the Rabified enemies can appear in the overworld. That's interesting. But for the most part, we should easily be able to deal with them. Just because, obviously, there's just one Wild Claw in between us and one Stooge over here. So as long as we do this right, we should be able to do a decent amount. And honestly, we can go for a big crit here, as long as, well, yeah, like that. <laughs> as long as we move like that, for sure. Let's set up Steely Stair, just in case. We'll skip through that real quick. And then we'll set up a nice little hit on this guy. Because I feel like this should do this guy in, pretty much. Just because of the fact that that does a lot of damage. Yeah, he's pretty much done. He's <laughs> He's got no chance. And then what we can do is just go, boop, like that, knock you on out. And then I think, oh, yep, we could definitely get right up on top of you for a nice triple troll and hit you for some decent damage. Not bad. And then from there, honestly, we could just go for a Stormblade. And just like that, Wild Claw and his little buddy are completely down for the counts. <laughs> nice try, though. Nice try indeed. And we also get a little bit of our HP back, too, I think, for doing that as well. So, honestly, was not, was definitely worth the effort. But there we go. Okay, so let's see here. Climb down. And it looks like uh, we got ourselves some kind of puzzle, it looks like. Okay. It looks like we need to match the faces, it looks like. And it says, restore the paintings. Okay. I heard Augie painted himself in a corner again. Help him save face by solving the riddle. Ooh, ooh a talking fountain. 
we should solve the riddle it might grant us a wish. It may be my freedom for one riddle. Okay, seems easy enough. So basically fix the faces. Well, this one looks like Aki. So I'm guessing this is probably going to go... Yep, that's perfect. <laughs> that's actually perfect. Okay, uh, this one I'm not as sure. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see here. I think this one... No, it actually has to be... Actually, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Yeah, the faces are wrong, actually. So we need to pull this one out, actually. <laughs> this one goes to this one, because this one actually looks scared. There we go, because he's getting hit by a crab. This one will obviously go here. Actually, no, it doesn't. Okay, was there an... Yep, there's... Okay, there was another one. So this one should go over here, then. No, it doesn't, actually. Hmm. Let's see. And more, it's more depending on what we're dealing with when it comes to these. Okay, well, that one seems like it would be this one. Yep, that one's definitely that one. Okay, so now we got this guy over here. We have two options here. We have... I'm pretty sure this, this one's going to go to the purple one based on this one not wanting to go to any of the other ones, to be completely fair. So there we go. Him kissing the hermit, the hermit crab on his head. And now we just need to put this guy... Oh, I can see the book now <laughs> that he's obviously reading on there. There we go. Easy peasy. <laughs> it's just that uh, you need to define the actual... Like, I didn't know this, there was four of them to begin with. But there we go. And this should be... I'm pretty sure, yep, the spark. Oh, he's got a little uh, lightning bolt uh, little surfboard going on. <laughs> well, there we go. We got ourselves a Luma, at least. Although, we didn't get him, though. So it looks like we've got to kind of chase him down to get him. <laughs> well, let's exit the tunnel over here. And it looks like we made our way out of the actual Sunrise Temple as well. And it seems like we're actually in a spot that's away from everything, too. Wow, the temple actually goes quite far. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't actually realize how far the temple actually goes. <laughs> but it looks like, oh, we gotta chase him quite far, it looks like. Okay, well, um, I was wanting to get that Luma, but it doesn't look like we're gonna get him anytime soon, from what it currently looks like, unless... Oh no, it just says defeat the Dark Mess Puddle. Okay, well, um, with that being said, I think this is where we're gonna end off today's episode, because we've done quite a decent amount already today. And I'm trying to complete the worlds that we're on while also doing the story as well. Because I feel like um, once we jump to a new world, we probably might not return to the previous world. And honestly, we might not do every single mission, I, I should say. But we'll try and do a decent amount. Just because I want to kind of, you know, do everything as much as we can while enjoying the entire game. Because there's no reason not to, right? So with that being said... Thank you all for watching, have a wonderful rush day, keep being spooky, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. Hey boys and girls, thank you all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out guys.